please like this video and share it with a friend. I'd really appreciate it. In this video, we'll analyze the pronunciation of a native Spanish speaker. His name is Anle Lopez Escaño, and he's from the area of San Francisco de Macorís, Dominican Republic. He has a YouTube channel with a few videos on it if you'd like to hear him speaking a little more. Since I speak English throughout this video, I'm going to refer to him with the English pronunciation of his first name, Hanley. I hope that's all right with him. I'm going to conduct this analysis a little differently from the others I've done so far, because Hanley's a native Spanish speaker, which means he doesn't make non-native pronunciation errors. Obviously, all normal adults speak their native language perfectly, in that they speak their native dialect like an adult native speaker of that dialect. So what's the point of this video? Well, Hanley recorded this so that those of you who'd like to hear what a Dominican accent sounds like could have a sample. And I'd like to thank him for collaborating with me and sharing his time with all of us. Before we jump in and listen to his recording, I'd like to prepare you a little for what sorts of things to listen for. Dominican Spanish has several very interesting phonological features, and Hanley pronounced pretty much all of them. Let's talk about some of what you can listen for. As in most coastal dialects in Latin America, Hanley's dialect is strongly S-reducing. This means that when speaking normally, he either reduces or omits virtually all syllable final S's and many word final S's. Because he was reading slowly and enunciating carefully for our benefit, he undoubtedly pronounced more S's than he would in casual spontaneous speech, but he still reduced many of them. Listen for him to pronounce justo, escucha, and este, like juto, escucha, and este. And listen for phrases like unos metros, estaba demasiado asustado, and tres cucharadas, to be pronounced like uno metro, estaba demasiado asustado, and tres cucharadas. Another thing he does that's common to Caribbean and coastal dialects is pronounce word final N as a velar nasal. So listen for him to pronounce phrases like fue en este momento, también notó, and sin más ceremonias, like fue en este momento, también notó, and sin más ceremonia. One thing he does that's stereotypical of the Dominican Republic is replace L with tapped R and vice versa. Listen for him to pronounce calva as carva, habló as abro, un par de pasos as un par de pasos, cualidad as cualidad, interior de la bolsa as interior de la bolsa, verde as belde, and todo el resto del mundo as todo el resto del mundo. Additionally, he pronounces a sound that's something intermediate between an L and an R. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but you can hear it in these words and phrases. Of course, all three of the preceding features are just different manifestations of a general reduction in the liquid consonants, which you can also hear in the following words. I feel that I don't quite imitate this reduced R correctly, so I won't do that here, but I'll point it out during Hanley's reading. And this brings us to one very Dominican thing Hanley does, which is pronounced trilled R preceded by an aspiration. Listen for phrases like cuando ocurrió, bastante rara, and lenta y chirriante, to be pronounced like cuando ocurrió, bastante rara, and lenta y chirriante. A related thing Hanley does is pronounce word initial trilled R in a few places in a very relaxed fashion that almost sounds like a tapped R. One feature of northern Dominican Spanish I was hoping Hanley would pronounce for us is the manifestation of L and R as the vowel E. Now this feature, that Dominicans refer to as hablar con la i, is much more prominent in Santiago, where words like mujer can be heard pronounced as mujer, and normal can be heard pronounced as normai, nolmai, and even noimai. Hanley doesn't seem to do this much, but there was one instance where he pronounced the word verde as beide. Apart from these more unusual features, Hanley displays some very ordinary coastal and lowland Latin American phonology. He pronounces double L and Y as a palatal fricative in words like patillas, apoyado, and mejillas. He pronounces the voiceless velar fricative less gutturally than I do, something more like an English H, in words like hojas, traje, and cojeando, that he pronounces more like hojas, traje, and cojeando. He enunciates soft B and V very softly in phrases like movimiento de hojas, that he pronounces like movimiento de hojas and he pronounces the Spanish X as if it were S in words like extraño and aproximo, which he pronounces extraño and aproximo. He also nasalizes vowels before N and reduces or omits word final D. You can hear this in his personal story in which he pronounces ciudad more like ciudad. 
Now, there are two pronunciations in his submission that I don't know how to explain. He pronounced the word bente as bente, and he did it twice, so it can't be passed off as a slip of the tongue. I'm not aware of that being a dialectal variation of the EI diphthong, or specifically of the word bente in the Dominican Republic, although I'm certainly not an expert on Dominican dialects. In his personal story, he also pronounced the word mamífero like mangmífero. I know that lots of coastal dialects convert anterior consonants to posterior consonants, so words like observar are pronounced observar, and adaptar are pronounced adaptar. I've also heard words like innato and imno pronounced ignato and igno. I think this is probably a manifestation of that tendency, although in Spanish mamífero is spelled with only one m. And finally, there were two phrases in his reading that I think were a bit of a wink and a nod to listeners. For the most part, he articulated words completely, even when he used Dominican phonology. But he pronounced these two phrases as if they were spoken in the most casual and stereotypically Dominican fashion. Estaba demasiado asustado, which he pronounced, estaba demasiado asustado, and es para ti, which he pronounced, e para ti. He pronounced these two phrases this way quite purposefully as sort of Easter eggs. Okay, so with all that said, let's listen to Hanley's recording. As we listen and read along, each time Hanley pronounces a word with one of the seven major features of Dominican phonology that we've just discussed, I'm going to highlight those pronunciations. That way, if you want to rewind the video and try to hear exactly what I'm talking about, you can. In addition to the things that I highlight throughout his reading were several L sounds that I thought were maybe intermediate between L and R, but I was afraid to commit to my impression, so I didn't highlight them. As you listen, please keep in mind that Hanley read and spoke particularly slowly for the benefit of our non-native viewers, so that you could really hear the details of his dialect. Obviously, this isn't his normal reading pace, and it certainly isn't his normal speaking pace. This is a favor to us. All right, here goes. James y el melocotón gigante Fue en este momento cuando ocurrió la primera cosa de toda, la cosa bastante rara que luego dio lugar a las otras cosas mucho más raras que le sucedieron. Porque de pronto, justo a sus espaldas, James oyó un movimiento de hojas y al volverse vio un anciano vestido con un extraño traje de color verde oscuro que salía de entre los arbustos. Era un hombre de pequeña estatura, pero tenía una enorme cabeza calva y la cara casi oculta tras una poblada patilla negra. Se paró a unos metros y se quedó mirando seriamente a Jane, apoyado en su bastón. Cuando habló, su voz era lenta y chirriante. Acércate a mí, pequeño. Dijo, señalando a Jane con el dedo, Ven aquí y te enseñaré algo maravilloso. Jane estaba demasiado asustado como para moverse. El anciano avanzó cojeando un par de pasos y entonces metió una mano en el bolsillo de la chaqueta y sacó una bolsita de papel blanco. Ves esto. Susurró, balanceando suavemente la bolsita ante los ojos de Jane. ¿Sabes lo que es esto, hijo? ¿Sabe lo que hay dentro de esta bolsita? Entonces se acercó otro poco, se inclinó hacia adelante y aproximó tanto su cara a la de Jane que este pudo notar su respiración en las mejillas. La respiración del anciano olía a moho viejo y a cerrado, igual que el aire de una bodega subterránea. Echa una mirada, hijo, dijo, abriendo la bolsa enseñándole a Jane. En su interior, Jane vio un montón de cositas verdes que parecían piedrecitas, o cristales del tamaño de un grano de arroz. Eran increíblemente hermosas y tenían un extraño brillo, una especie de cualidad luminosa que las hacía destellar 
y relucir de una forma maravillosa. Escúchalas, susurró el anciano. Escucha cómo se mueven. Jane miró en el interior de la bolsa y pudo comprobar que se notaba un débil murmullo y también notó que aquellas miles de cositas verdes se movían lenta, muy, muy lentamente, subiéndose unas encima de otras como si tuvieran vivas. Hay más poder y magia en estas cositas de aquí que en todo el resto del mundo, dijo el anciano con voz suave. Pero, pepero, ¿qué son? murmuró James, encontrando por fin su voz. ¿De dónde vienen? Ajá, susurró el anciano. Ni tú lo imaginas. Se agachó un poco más y acercó la cara de James, tanto que su nariz rozaba la frente de este. De pronto dio un salto hacia atrás y empezó a brandir su bastón por encima de la cabeza. Lengua de cocodrilo, gritó. Mil largas viscosas lenguas de cocodrilo, cocida en el cráneo de una bruja muerta durante veinte días y veinte noches. Con los ojos de un lagarto se añaden los dedos de un mono joven en el buche de un cerdo, el pico de un loro verde el jugo de un puerco espín y tres cucharadas de azúcar. Se cuece todo durante otra semana y se deja que la luna haga el resto. Sin más ceremonia, puso la blanca bolsita de papel en la mano de James y dijo, Ten, sujétala, es para ti. Hola, mi nombre es Hani López. Y soy de San Francisco de Macorís, República Dominicana. Mi ciudad queda aproximadamente a dos horas de Santo Domingo. Y cerca de mi ciudad hay una montaña muy representativa de esta zona. La cual se llama la Loma Quita Espuela. Y mide unos 985 metros de altura. Siendo una reserva científica y uno de los pocos lugares del país donde se puede encontrar el animal que está en peligro de extinción llamado solenodonte, el cual es uno de los pocos mamíferos venenosos. Y además se puede encontrar diversas plantas como son las palmas reales, la piña y almendros. Esta montaña no es tan alta, pero cuando yo fui a subirla se me hizo muy difícil porque no tenía buenas condiciones físicas. De hecho, me cansé y mis amigos me tomaron fotos, las cuales la postearon para realizar memes y stickers sobre ellas y ahora se ríen de mí <ríe> pero todo fue chévere porque la pasamos bien disfrutando de la naturaleza de los animales las plantas y los invito a todos ustedes a venir y darse la vuelta por esa montaña Espero que la puedan escalar. All right. Now, with regard to his rating, Hanley speaks Spanish in a fashion that's genuinely indistinguishable from a native speaker, because he is a native speaker. He gets a 10, which is a score only true native speakers can achieve. I hope you enjoyed analyzing Hanley's accent with me. I hope you learned something about Spanish phonetics and phonology, and dialectology, and specifically Dominican Spanish. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos on Spanish pronunciation.